Coming up on Mountain News this morning, schools are still struggling to find school resource officers more than one year after House Bill 63 was passed. Plus, there was a truck and train crash in Lincoln County. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Olivia Calfi. The time is 533 on December 28th. Now let's send it over to meteorologist Jane Smith for a look at your forecast this morning. Well, thank you very much, Olivia. We are dealing with a few showers across southern and eastern Kentucky this morning, mainly in our northern and western counties. Back up towards the Mountain Parkway satellite and radar picture showing that rain pushing off to the east and northeast. Here's a closer look using pinpoint Doppler. You can see a light shower from Jackson back over towards Campton, extending up towards Stanton right along the Mountain Parkway. And that rain is continuing to work its way off to the east and northeast. We're seeing in dry conditions at the WYMT studio right now. Jenkins, you are dry. Had a little bit of fog there earlier. Mount Vernon, a little bit of rain in your vicinity, but it will be moving out quickly. Temperatures generally into the 30s and 40s as we speak. The fog really thick in the Big Sandy. Pikeville, Prestonsburg, both showing zero miles visibility. Same story over in Logan, West Virginia. Moorhead, you're also down to zero miles visibility and one mile in Harlan and Jonesville down in the Cumberland Valley. So our valley locations dealing with a little bit of fog this morning. Just know you may need a few extra minutes for your morning commute as temperatures only climb into the mid 40s today. So a cooler day, a little bit more on the dreary side in the morning. I think we will see a few breaks in the clouds this afternoon. But winter weather, the big story heading our way for the weekend. We'll talk about that here in a few minutes, Olivia. Shane, thank you. House Bill 63 requires all Kentucky schools to have at least one school resource officer. It's been more than a year since the deadline put in place by the legislature for schools to find SROs, yet more than 40% of schools do not have one. Samantha Valentino takes a closer look at why Kentucky schools can't find them. For me, it was, I felt like it was a calling. Lieutenant Tony Likens has been the SRO at Anderson County High School for seven years. I feel like when I walk up to this property, before I even get here, I'm already in that role as a, as a protector. In 2017, the district partnered with the Sheriff's Office to put one SRO in each of the district schools. The school system tried to do it by themselves. They can come up with the funding, but where do they get the trained officers? The Sheriff tried to do it by himself. We can't afford it but the combination of the two working together in team, as a team made it all possible. The state required all schools to do the same in 2022, but many still struggle to do so. The two things that you hear superintendents say is one, where do you get the funding? And two, how do you find the staff? According to the state, about 43% of Kentucky schools do not have an assigned school resource officer. But what does that look like? To put things into perspective, this is 1,327, the number of SROs the state needs. This is how many we have, just 758. That leaves 569 Kentucky schools without an SRO. We have one SRO right now. And it took them a year to find that one, but there are five schools in Wolf County. It's a hard feeling, you know, knowing that the applicants are not there, the funding is not there, but the need is. Districts unable to meet the requirement are required to tell the state why. Overwhelmingly, they blame funding. There's a 120-hour certification for our SROs. Ben Wilcox is the state school security marshal. He says this training involves your standard firearms and active shooter trainings, but also the mental health of students. We don't want to change in the way of ever going backwards with our training for our officers. We just continue to have to do what we're doing right now and is finding those creative funding issues, finding uh, folks that want to be in this position. Many think lawmakers should help fund SROs through new legislation. Senator Max Wise was the lead sponsor of Senate Bill 1, the School Safety and Resiliency Act. This is a budget session coming up in 2024. I'm hoping that the Kentucky General Assembly uh, continues to look at school safety uh, from an SRO perspective. In the meantime, Wise says he's proud of the way Kentucky districts have gotten 
and creative when it comes to hiring SROs. And it's not because of me as a legislator, it's because school districts also have stepped up. Police departments have made a commitment to this. Uh, and, and I give so much credit to those that are doing this job. Working together like we do, we, we see positive outcomes. Samantha Valentino, WKYT. The 2024 legislative session begins this coming Tuesday. After several days on the run, a Southern Kentucky shooting suspect is in custody. Kentucky State Police say they found Donald Napier in Floyd County. He is accused of shooting a couple. The two were shot Saturday while they were driving in the great community of Knox County. They are expected to be okay. Police say a tip led them to Napier. He is facing two charges of assault. The number of calls to the state's problem gambling hotline have tripled since sports betting became legal in September. Kentucky also has a limited number of trained and qualified counselors to serve the entire population. The Kentucky Council on Problem Gambling tells us it's caught them by surprise. Kelsey Soto reports. Did you expect to see the numbers increase this quickly on, you know, just a two, three months in? No, uh, I thought it would be a steady progression that we would get to these numbers as the sports betting evolved. I did not expect uh, a, a tripling of the raw calls and a doubling of the help calls in the first month. Michael Stone is the executive director of the Kentucky Council on Problem Gambling. He tells me there's only seven qualified counselors around the state. That means none in northern Kentucky, zero in Bowling Green or Paducah, and in Lexington, the state's second largest metro, not a one. We have these great geographic holes when and some people think well you know that's uh, those those stations that you're talking about you know they're part of the bible belt there's not uh, not as much incidence of gambling and that would be wrong while 2.5 percent of the sports betting revenue is set aside for the problem gambling fund that money likely won't be available until midway through 2024 it's projected to be an estimated 1.2 million dollars a year so there's a number of steps just normal natural bureaucratic steps that have to take place before any of that happens. The other objective is to advertise and better promote the resources available. Uh, another reason why people don't consider gambling or have not considered gambling as, as an addictive uh, behavior is because you don't ingest anything. You don't smoke it. You don't uh, swallow it. There is a plan in place to train and certify additional counselors around the state. A 30-hour clinic is set for next month and paid for by the council. That was Kelsey Soto reporting. The National Council on Problem Gambling estimates that 1% of U.S. adults have a gambling disorder and 2-3% to have a gambling problem. Kentucky's Problem Gambling Hotline is 1-800-GAMBLER and is answered by people within the state. One person is dead after a train and truck collided in Lincoln County. Officials say a pickup truck was crossing the tracks when it was hit by a northbound train. The crossing has flashing lights and sounds, but there is no crossbar. It's one of several crossings just like it up and down Kentucky 2141. People who live nearby did not see this crash, but they say this has been a common occurrence since they have lived there. You've seen people try to beat the tracks right here to the same spot. Uh, seen people stall actually even and had, had to push cars over uh, hearing trains coming. Seen a uh, nice uh, Camaro get hit not even a year ago just down the road here. A Lincoln County deputy sheriff says the person killed is a man, but officials have not released his name. The train that hit the truck was on Norfolk Southern tracks, and it was carrying a double-decker load of boxcars. A man is accused of breaking into someone's Wayne County home while they were in the hospital. The sheriff's office says it happened last week on Hilltop View Road. They say a family friend went to check on the home and found Dustin Southwood inside. He claimed he was also asked to check on the home, but family told deputies that was a lie and found a pry bar sticking out of a safe. Southwood was charged with burglary.
Coming up, we have some bad news for Amazon Prime users who are looking to avoid commercials. And the forecast looking a little foggy this morning. However, we turn wintry tomorrow. Details after the break.